Merry Markup, a sequel to Seasons Critiquings. Dear still unpublished author, we here at Writers Group Critique Service are always unhappy when someone is disappointed with our professional services. We are even unhappier when they fail to make all of the changes we suggested to their work. We are unhappiest of all when they complain to the Better Business Bureau, as well as the Fraud Division of the State Attorney General's Office, that we took their money and, quote, did nothing to improve their writing but belittle it and make nasty, sniping comments, close quote. The Writers Group Critique Service is, of course, a service business, just as it says in the name. We have nothing to offer writers but our time and our advice. Consequently, we are unable to offer refunds for our critique of your foggy tail, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. As our time has already been expended, it only flows in one direction after all, and our critique, crafted from our considerable experience in criticizing everything we have ever read, has already been given. Neither can be taken back, even if you are taken aback by them. However, in accordance with the spirit of the season and the orders of the professional mediator appointed by the Attorney General to resolve this complaint, we have agreed to provide an additional critique of your writing. Although given as a compromise to resolve our differences, please understand that we have not compromised, nor will we ever compromise, our professional standards in connection with our professional critiques of amateur writing. First, the name of your latest scribblings, Frosty the Snowman. Still naming your doggerel after the protagonist, I see. As mentioned before, this does nothing to inform the potential reader as to the nature of your work, but you've already proved you don't care about that, so let's just move on to the more pressing point. Why would you name your title character after a non-dairy frozen confection offered by a fast food hamburger joint? It can't be because the name is so perfectly apt. If so, you would not have needed to explain Frosty was a snowman right there in the title. The Eskimos have over 100 words for snow, and you couldn't come up with a single one other than a word which is, at best, a derivative of a cold weather condition which arises from completely different atmospheric conditions than snow. Jack Frost would be so proud of you. Frosty the Snowman was a jolly, happy soul. This is the essence of telling, not showing. You say he was jolly when you could have instead included dialogue of his ho-ho-hoing, laughing jovially at lame jokes, and telling amusing anecdotes to passers-by. With a corncob pipe and a button nose, and two eyes made out of coal. The connective with is confusing here. Are these accoutrements of construction meant to be sources of Frosty's announced jolliness, or have we moved from a declaration of his personality type to a description of his appearance, all in a single sentence? If so, perhaps a semicolon would have improved the sentence structure. Further, do we need to be told he has two eyes? I mean, isn't that assumed unless he's an arachnid? Also, the point of view of the story is ambiguous. Frosty can't see that his eyes are made out of coal, so this must be some kind of universal omniscient perspective, which seems out of place in a holiday story which is completely secular, a fact which is immediately confirmed in the next line. Frosty the Snowman is a fairy tale, they say. You say fairy tale. I say depressing young adult magical realism with a side of horror. But I guess that's the difference between genre writing and literature, isn't it? And who is this mysterious they? Even more than a pronoun without a proper antecedent, this they suggests that this tale is a derivative of a character from another work, which you are simply plagiarizing, or that you are one of those writers who merely writes down what the voices in his head tells him to write in which case I believe you should have a serious talk with your therapist or mental health care professional, and that such conversation should include the words hallucinations and schizophrenic. He was made of snow. Duh, he's a snowman. What do you think the reader thought he was made out of? Tapioca? But the children know how he came to life one day. Shifting point of view here, or perhaps more of that omniscient universalist perspective again, and why is it the children rather than simply children? The the connotes some specific children, but none are, none are mentioned earlier in the story. Are there children's voices speaking to you in your mind? If so, add the words multiple personality disorder to your chat with the shrink and stay away from sharp objects. There must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found. Ah, the essence of magical realism. Unless, of course, you meant this to refer to a magician's hat. They are, after all, the only people who really wear 
or at least pour milk into, top hats in this day and age. In which case, it is no surprise that there was magic in it. Though it is odd, there was no rabbit in it. For when they placed it on his head, when they placed it on his head, this they at least has a clear antecedent, the children. But it seems unlikely, or at least awkward, that multiple children did the placing. Wouldn't it be more likely that one child, perhaps the tallest, or an adult passerby who liked watching children playing in the park did the actual placing? He began to dance around. Around what? Details drive action. Get your facts straight. Oh, I think the vernacular is, oh my god, often short, shortened to OMG. If you're going to write YA fiction, you really need to keep up with the times. Try hanging around children more often. If you hang around enough parks and schoolyards, you might get a chance to place a top hat on a snowman or take a ride in a police car. Frosty the snowman, you already established the snow part, was alive as he could be. Degrees of aliveness is an odd concept to include in a YA piece, though the Princess Bride did a pretty good job with mostly dead, even though Billy Crystal is really smarmy as Miracle Max in the movie. And the children say, are these children speaking in unison? I thought only reindeer did that. He could laugh and play just the same as you and me. Couldn't you replace just the same as with like? Then at least someone would like this tale. Thumpity, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, thump. Really? This is your idea of moving the plot along? Thumpity, thump, thump? Maybe I would expect this from the missing magician's rabbit, but a snowman? Wouldn't it be more like squishity scrunch slush, squishity scrunch slush? Look at Frosty go. Yick, this gives me nightmares of yellow snow. Thumpity thump thump, thumpity thump thump. Given the icicle appendage Frosty was using to go, I don't even want to think about what he's doing to thumpity thump thump. Over the hills of snow. You mean snowbanks, snowdrifts? Who uses the word hills to describe snow? Frosty the snowman knew. Another point of view shift. The sun was hot that day. Actually, the sun is hot every day. In fact, the sun is hot every night, too. It's just that we can't see it on the other side of the freaking planet. Obviously, you meant that the weather was hot, or at least warm, or maybe lukewarm, or even cool, at least above freezing. Maybe you should say what you mean. So he said, let's run and we'll have some fun before I melt away. Please insert quotation marks to indicate actual quotes from a character so as to differentiate them from the various summations of content of what they say or the children said. I'm also concerned that the hedonistic let's have fun before I die a gruesome public death philosophy is more appropriate to a heavy metal rocker than to a beloved character in a children's tale. Down to the village with a broomstick in his hand. Given the lack of broomstick in the earlier description of Frosty, I can only assume that petty theft has been added to the repertoire of this frozen food concoction. Careful consideration should be given to including weapons and materials directed at impressionable children. Running here and there all around the square, saying, catch me if you can. Where do I begin? Not only do we have a scene inciting children to write as behavior, a round square, and a lack, once again, of proper quotation marks, but we have vagueness here and there, instead of specificity in the scene. What's the snowman's motivation? What's the children's motivation? Is following the snowman here and there all around the square some kind of reference to the drug-induced hallucinations of a cocaine-infused drug miasma? He led them down the streets of town right to the traffic cop. This contradicts the prior sentence where the snowman was running here and there all around the square. Please make your mind up, or at least ask the voices in your head to come to a reasoned consensus amongst themselves before they tell you what to write. And he paused, and he only paused a moment when he heard him holler, stop. Advising children to pause only momentarily when ordered by police authorities to stop is an incredibly inappropriate and inadvisable message in this day and age and could result in liability in the event of an unfortunate officer-involved shooting. Perhaps the sentence should read something more like, and he immediately halted and held up his arms up and away from his body, dropping any items in his hand, like a broomstick, 
which might be mistaken as a weapon, as he calmly awaited further instructions from the duly appointed police official as he made further inquiry. For Frosty the snowman had to hurry on his way. Suddenly there's a space between snow and man. Consistency would be nice, especially in a short story about solids melting into liquids. But he waved goodbye, saying, don't you cry. This metaphor for deadbeat fathers abandoning their children during the holidays is a depressing, downbeat ending to a Christmas tale, especially one lacking proper quotation marks. I'll be back again someday. Lies. It's always a lie. They never come back. They just run off with the receptionist and spend Christmas with their new family in Florida. Thumpity, thump, thump. Thumpity, thump, thump. Is that what you're doing right now, Dad, with your receptionist with the big bosom? Look at Frosty go. I can't look, Dad. I can't. Thumpity, thump, thump. Thumpity, thump, thump. You know, I was home that one time when you brought her back to the house. Over the hills of snow. What kind of metaphor is that to end a children's tale? You're a sick bastard. In conclusion, we here at Writers Group Critique Service are still awaiting a marketable tale with some aliens, some explosions, and plenty of elf-on-elf -elf action. Sincerely, I'm a hack, Writers, Writers Group Critique Service. Thank you.